It's a time-honored tradition, passed down from generations. And even though we don't know what tomorrow holds, we can do our part today. To ensure the future of elk, other wildlife, their habitat, and our hunting heritage. Join today and help us ensure the future. Well, welcome to episode number 30 of According to Flint. And what better way to celebrate our 30th episode? To have the one and only, she's a world champion several times, a legend in roping. I'm not saying ladies roping. I'm saying just roping. It's the one and only. It's Jay Quellen herself, Jackie Crawford. <laughs> I'm not the, I heard I'm not the Jay only one. I've heard I'm not the only one that calls you Jay Quellen, that I'm not that original. Um, I have a few nicknames. They're not as nice as that sometimes. Jackson Brown. I've Jackson. called you Jackson Brown. Before. Jackson. You, that's what I thought you were going to call me was Jackson. Yeah. You, you called that a lot. Yeah. Well, you are, we were talking before we went on the air and I saved this for you. You of, of our 30 episodes, I have been told I need to have more lady guests that I'm a little bit discriminatory in that uh -huh. you're our fourth. Okay. I had one with my daughters. Charmaine James. I don't, I don't even know if that counts because I mean, no, that's a, yeah, that's that. family. I had to do that. You it was to do that. Yeah. It's a good one though. Okay. So yeah. excluding family, you're my third one. Here's, here's the three, you Charmaine James and governor Christy Nome. And oh, you, I'm definitely the most famous. You, you are. Yeah. You're in, that's a great, <laughs> that's a great group. We should all get together and have drinks. That would be so, awesome. uh, a different, you're coming off, I visited with you, you were in this past weekend as we record this, you were in Salinas, the big California Rodeo, which kind of wrapped up a busy summer and different summer for all you guys in the yeah. world of breakaway roping, kind of a breakthrough mm -hmm. summer this year, didn't you feel like for you guys? Yeah, it was, you know, there's been like a group of us that have been going like kind of underneath the radar, I guess, like we've been going for three or four years, but never like this year, you know, I mean, this year it was kind of legit, like not, not as much as the guys like say half. So we would like drive over here and then we would pass the guys, you know, and, and the barrel racers at some rodeo and just kind of wave and go to another one, you know, 300 miles further and then turn around and pass another one. It just kind of, so we kind of zigzagged around, but still yet we were gone. I mean, I just got home last night at midnight and I've been gone since June 16th. So yeah. Glamorous, yeah. isn't it? It's, it's all yes. glamorous, bright yes, lights and sparkle. And it's a fairy tale, really. I mean, <laughs> it's just, it's everything I've ever dreamed of. Oh, <laughs> well. No, you know what though? I do say I, I, I will not be one that comes home and bitches about getting to do what I have dreamed about doing forever because you can make it what you want. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah, exactly. I made sure we had fun. The kids, we went to the carnivals, we went to the water parks, we went on river trips. We went, I mean, all the things that you can do that you're actually going to remember one day, mm -hmm. we did them. So, yeah. so I think you can make it what you want. You know? well, well, you were, and I thought you were leading to this. There is a group of women's breakaway ropers. And I don't know what order to discuss this because I really feel... I don't know. I've, my girls have been breakaway ropers. I grew up watching breakaway ropers in the, the NRA up here in Montana. Cause my dad announced all those rodeos. That's where I started. So I thought you were going to say there's a, a lot of ropers have been going forever, but it just yeah. hasn't been at PRCA rodeos. Mm -hmm. That's right. the difference now. Mm -hmm. Correct. Absolutely. I mean, if you go look, anybody can go look and look at from the, you know, the little junior rodeos to the junior high, to the, high school and then to college breakaway is one of the biggest numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, and it's always been like, it's been like that. I mean, it's not like these girls just came out of nowhere just because they get, started getting at it at the PRC rodeos. The girls have been there the whole time. It's just all of a sudden these doors open and it was like, they just kicked them in and as soon as they got a crack in them because, you know, they've been waiting for that opportunity. A lot of girls. And I mean, especially now, I mean, I remember when I was in college, breakaway was one of the biggest events. And now breakaway is there was almost 200 breakaway ropers last weekend in the Southwest region alone college, just college age girls, yeah. Southwest region alone. I mean, it's crazy. 
I went to, uh, I took one day. This is how weak I've gotten in the rodeo world. I took one day. I saw you. I took Shelby. We left at, at uh, five in the morning, four in the morning, and went to Belfouche, South Dakota. This was over the 4th of July. To mm-hmm. Belfouche in the morning in Slack, and then up to Kildare, North Dakota, and back. Mm-hmm. It was a 24 hour day, and I almost died. But she was like 130th in the Slack. At Belfouche, yeah. <laughs> 150 girls at both places. And you're right. They've been out there. There are great ropers. Mm-hmm. And and like Shelby said, you go a place like Kildare and they played 12 spots or 15 spots and 15th was like a 2.4. I mean, yeah. the talent in, in ladies, let me tell you something. The ladies can rope some calves. It's a, it's a snake 100%. pit. It's a snake pit out there. It's all yeah, hundred percent. So, and you know what's crazy is that like the girls that are doing that stuff, there's been that's what I kind of got myself in a little bit of a pickle, and I was just trying to be too fast. I was just trying to do more than I could, mm. and I got to talking to one of the I can't even remember which cap roper it was, but and I said, "Gosh, you know, it's just gotten so fast. I just don't know if I've lost a step or, or what it is, you know." And he looked at me. He's like, "Jackie, you're." as fast or faster than anybody always have been. It hasn't changed. There's just more girls that have learned to be fast. So don't, he's like, you can't change what you've always done. There's just so many young girls that have learned to rope. And and I think honestly, Clint, I think it's just going to get more, it's just going to get tougher and tougher. And, and the tough girls are going to get deeper and deeper. I mean, you know, because there's, there's something to look forward to. I mean, there's something to yeah. work towards before we were just working at it because we loved it. You know, we, we loved it and we wanted to go to our amateur rodeo finals and whatever it may be, or when, you know, a big annual roping or whatever, but now it's like, Oh my gosh, I need to work at getting better at Salinas's setup or, you know, Pendleton setup, or even just the one, one, eight, one, nine setup. I mean, you have stuff to look forward to. And now that we've kind of got to go to these rodeos and get like a view of the different setups and stuff. I mean, I'm coming home with a whole different game plan than I ever have. I mean, I'm fixing to like just torture myself and all of the things around me, probably my family as well from opening the shoe, but you know what? It's just, it's, it's what's going to happen. So it's pretty cool though, too, because I think that breakaway sometimes gets stuck kind of in the same setup. Like everybody thinks one, eight, one, nine, two flat. Like that's, you know, kind of the common, whatever. It's been fun to go to these rodeos that aren't scared to strap it out there a little bit more. Right. You know, and, and have a different game. That's been so fun. Yeah. I like to, I, I used to joke my, Hey, by the way, you know, my brother, Will, who's a rodeo announcer. And I want you to know, I think I should reveal him right now. He has been, <laughs> he has been the biggest bitcher of breakaway roping. <laughs> I'll never forget. It was 1994 and he bought his PRCA card as announcer and he had a, he was doing insurance work and I walked in his office and he held his, his PRCA card up and he said, do you know what this PRCA card means? And I'm thinking something real deep, you know, do you know what this means? And I said, what's it mean? Will? I never have to ro- announce breakaway roping ever again. Oh <laughs> like, my gosh. So oh now gosh. it's like full circle. Mm. Guess what? Mm-hmm. But I enjoy, like you say, the long starts, fresh calves. I think yeah. I've learned because my girls are so into breakaway roping. I like watching great horses work probably more than anything. And that's one thing I've seen is horsepower with the ladies, but it's, it has breakaway roping has changed and it's fun to watch and it's fun for the fans to watch too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so. I mean, I, I really do. The fans seem to get into it at every rodeo and there seems to be great feedback and like, Every time, you know, that it's aired somewhere, I mean, and my inbox just fills up with like people saying nice stuff. So it's like, okay, people, it's not just us that like it. I do think it's fun to watch, you know, and and like I said, I just think it's going to get better and better as these girls get to these setups and get in these situations and, and the competition level is rising. I think that these girls are going to rise to the occasion and put more work into it. And it's just going to get better and better to watch. You know, I, uh, and I can ask you why why you think fans like it, but uh, touring PBR and different things with people who kind of pigeonhole ladies and have only seen pro rodeo through the years, they'll say, how are your barrel racers doing? They'll call my girls just barrel racers because when you say ladies in rodeo, that's Mm -hmm. automatically what they think. And I say, whoa, whoa, whoa. My girls do, you know, Shelby does four events at college rodeo. 
Barrel racing is just one of those events. Yeah. But I yeah. think the pro rodeo thing, I, instantly a rodeo like Reno pops into my head. I don't know. I always liked Reno and I watched it on TV. I just think those fans are really loving seeing ladies do something besides barrel race. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. You know what? I think I'm, I'm, I'm a barrel racing fan. I love watching barrel racing. I, I yeah. like the girls at barrel race. There's nothing, I have nothing against barrel race. I think that the breakaway roping brings a whole different aspect to it. When you put a rope in a girl's hand and then you see the guy's rope as well, it kind of has um, that, like you're throwing an athletic, a piece of the puzzle to it that you, you know, that girl, that girl had to put in that work herself. You know what I mean? No matter what, to be successful with that. Yeah. So I think it's pretty cool. And I, I, we have said this at our house and it by no means is just meant to be an insult to, to barrel racers, but I always say barrel racers, barrel race, cowgirls rope. That's right. Right. I know that's touchy. I know it's touchy. It's touchy. It's touchy. Cause I know a lot of barrel racers that are dang good cowgirls. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it's just like, like you said, I mean, when you think of a cowboy out cowboy and you put a rope in their hand, there's just something cool about that when a girl can do it. Um, when PBR first started having a women's championship rodeo, you know, really, and breakaway roping was coming out. And I don't, I don't know if I know how to say this the right way, but they would call me and say, we want to do a bunch of things and recognize these groundbreaking women that are, getting out and rope and really setting the treating you like you were the first, like breakaway roping yeah. just got invented. I, I argued with them a little and said, if you want to really show respect to these ladies, treat them like the champions they are. Don't make it an, I guess novelty maybe. And I'm sure when right. you pull in a big rodeo, that's all you just want to be treated like a contestant, like a professional, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's funny you say that because as much as I'm so grateful for like, I guess the rec, you'd call it the recognition of, you know, just trying to push the sport as much as possible. And I just, sometimes I cringe when they're like, this lady is the, you know, the pioneer or whatever. And I'm just like, sometimes I'm like, Oh my God, like there was so many before me. Like, I don't, I don't deserve that credit. You know, like those women, man, they did it when there was, nothing to do it for and and they just loved it and there's so many women before us I, I'm not even going to start to name because I will I will completely be <laughs> disrespectful to like so many of them because there there are there were just amazing women in rodeo for years and years and years and it's like I'm just lucky and in our era is just lucky that we have television and social media and all this stuff and and we're getting in this point where everything's just kind of coming right into the spotlight and we're in the midst of it and so it I appreciate it. And yes, I'm going to try my best to represent the sport and do all that. But there's so many women that have done this for years. Yeah. And I remember a PR person saying, we want to do a kind of a panel with the ladies and have young girls there to ask them about breakaway roping. I'm like, the young girls already know. Be- yeah, they're be- kicking our butt. They're kicking everybody's <laughs> But, but like you brought it up earlier, the, the thing about the, the, about pro rodeo having breakaway roping, it, I'm reiterating what you said earlier. Um, Little Bridges Rodeo, Junior High Rodeo, High School Rodeo, College Rodeo, Amateur Association. It was everywhere except in pro rodeo. That's, yeah. the, only, that's the only. That's the only place it wasn't. And even other pro, like, you know, it's been in the IPRA now before that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I mean... Literally, the PRCA was the only association not to have it, period. Yeah. Well, they're busy. They got a lot going on. They do. Yeah, yeah I get it. Trying to get out of their own it. way. Just to, I'm it's sorry. A big, it's a big step. It's I a big can, step. Not can, going there. <laughs> we're going to, for a minute. Don't we're going to, in a minute. Don't pit blend. Don't even do it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Hey, you know, <laughs> one thing I hear, and you, you brought it up earlier when you're traveling around, which can be so, it is exhausting. And it isn't all glamorous, but right. you take your kids to different places. We used to do that with our kids. We go to water parks or we'd, we'd go sightseeing. But, you know, there are, in the history of pro rodeos, it's full of dads out there rodeoing. Here's these dads and their families. It's different being a mom. It, it, it's completely different being a mom. But you are, wherever I'd see you, mom first. Mm-hmm. And that's a, it's a little bit of a 
tough balance. Do, okay, does it is it a tough balance or does it put it in perspective or does it put more pressure? What is it? Uh, that's such a hard question, I think, because, I mean, obviously, having my kids right there, you know, you can't have a bad day. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can't, you can't, I could go out there. I mean, I threw some of the worst loops I've ever thrown in my entire life this year because I, it was just awful. Like, some of those were like, you want to duck your head and you can't get out of the arena fast enough. Uh -huh. And as soon as I come around the corner and Creed's like, mama, like, how do you get mad? You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. okay, really? What? It was a loop. Who cares? You know? So, so it, that part is, is so nice. I mean, you know, but it's also, it's kind of a struggle because it's like, man, I want to do this right now. I kind of put a lot of pressure on myself in the same sense, because I'm like, I want to do this as hard as I can right now while they're little. Mm -hmm. And we're making great memories while they're little, because when it's their time to pick out what they want, you know, then it's going to be about them. You know, and, and so I, I give myself a limited amount of years, like when Creed decides, hey, I want to do this and I'm serious about this. OK, then that's what we're going to do. You know, so I'm like, get everything you can done right now and, and like kind of cram it all in there. So it does put a little bit of pressure and, and it's definitely um, distracting. Like like I can remember the days of pulling to the rodeo and only thinking about what I had to do and what calf I have and, mm -hmm. you know my thing now it's like oh get dressed get dressed i gotta get you dressed i gotta get you dressed i told oh, you, you not to i told you not Look, to crap your pants <laughs> i don't have time to be a poop right now we gotta go <laughs> like, <laughs> so it's just uh, thank gosh that i've always been kind of one of those people that just like goes with the chaos of life because i feel like if i would have been a structured person before this i don't know if i could have handled it but so thank goodness like i kind of thrive in the chaos of things and just roll with it you know with that uh I think it's kind of a cliche question that gets asked a lot, but since you kind of talked about your kids and when they make that decision, you've seen every aspect of rodeo with your husband, Charlie is he's been out and making the NFR. You beat it down the road. You haven't been home since June. Are you going to step back and it, it, it by assimilation, your kids will have a rope in their hand. They'll, but would you, is it a lifestyle you go, Oh God, just go to law school, <laughs> get some golf clubs. What do you think of it now as far as your kids loading up and doing it? I mean, I, I, I would want this lifestyle for anybody, honestly. I mean, I just think that we're different than, yeah. Are we just going to be prosperous as heck? Probably not. I mean, there's a like the two percenters that are just gonna that end up making a lot of money strictly off a of rodeo. But hopefully, we teach our kids to do a good enough job of you know managing their money and doing different things. But what other lifestyle do we go and make the friends that we make mm -hmm. and and do the things that we do? I mean, I think rodeo is so different. Like every, I feel like rodeo is so patriotic. We we keep so much heritage. That's stuff that to me, those kids aren't going to get anywhere else, and it's just there's so many lessons to learn about the Western industry or from the Western industry, I guess that you would say that even if later on they decide, Hey, I want to do something else. I think there's things they're going to learn. That's going to make them successful just yeah. from this. Well, funny yeah. you bring that up. And I had this for later. I'm not checking messages here. I screenshot <laughs> it because I ran across a thing from, is it breakaway journal that you did five things you'd want your it, was it your kids to know about rodeo? Five yeah, things. they asked me five things I want my daughters to know about rodeo. Your daughters to know about rodeo. But, but it's all the same. Yeah, but it's, I, I, there's a couple of them I really love. Uh, there are no shortcuts. Exactly. You can't, yeah. you can't get to the end with all the, without all the crap getting there. Yep, um, exactly. I do like, this one didn't stand out at first, but you've got to enjoy the process. It, I think that goes with no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts. You got to do all this hard work, but you got to enjoy. There's a lot to enjoy besides just loading up and showing up at the rodeo and eating a good hamburger, right? Right. hundred percent. Because like my theory on that is that if you don't, in, if you don't learn to enjoy the process, the victory is so short lived, you're going to be a miserable person. But the process is a hell of a lot longer than the victory. You know what I mean? The victory lasts for like this yeah. long and guess what? It starts all over the next day. Yeah. And so if that's all you're basing like your happiness on, 
you're not going to be a very happy person, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, it's kind of funny because I've, I've never really understood that. Like I've kind of always been kind of a happy go lucky person, whatever, but I never really understood like that you could be, you know, have fun in the practice band. So I went, to until I went to Trevor Brazil's and like spent some time at Trevor Brazil's in the practice then. And I literally like, I would hurt from laughing all day long. Yeah. And the whole time the guy is literally busting his tail working at, you know, four different events or whatever, however many events he did. I don't even know. <laughs> he did a lot. Okay. And he's just busting his tail all day. And most people would be so pissed off and tired and just like whatever. And he laughed and made it fun all stinking day long and that's just how it is and it was like this guy is the greatest in the world and he is making a ball of every single day in this whole process and I was like your life is made up of the process you're gonna spend more right. time in the process than anywhere else so you better He's, learn to enjoy it that guy inspires me has forever oh, because right? of the, because of that because of I know. That. and I know and the other thing about the process is when it comes down to winning and the end result you're gonna lose more than you're gonna win in road. 100%. 100%. You, have, you have to know how to lose. Yeah. Yep. Um, the, the next two that you mentioned are the two that really hit home with me. Number one, the relationships we make. We know that we're friends. Yeah. Uh, we wouldn't have been friends with the one for that. Well, I don't know if you, well, you you'd have got one look at me, Jack, and it had been <laughs> over. <laughs> but the friends we have, the relationships I have for, from the last 25 years, it's crazy. I, I take that. For, I shouldn't take for granted uh, the number of people that I have some sort of connection to because people in a normal world don't have that. They, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, okay, here's, here's yeah. the one that hits home. Here's the one I like. Uh, okay. You can't let the sport become too big. It, I've seen it be too big for parents. Of kids, I've seen it, then that affects it, and the kids think that I get, in my world, I liked that because I battle people thinking what they see in the arena is me all the time. And I always say, that's just my job. I got to put it away. Same with competitors. You're Jackie, the mom to me. You're a person. You can't let that whole, you can't let your identity be that. Is that kind of what you yeah. you're saying on that a hundred percent it's what we do it's not who we are like that's what we do we we rodeo and we compete but that's not that's not that's what I do you know that's not that's not who I am who I am is like you said I'm a wife I'm a mother I'm a friend like that's that's the things that and, and it's hard for me to balance it I get caught up as bad as anybody who's a competitor and works hard and all that I get just as bad it's like my husband he'll have to like bring me back in his perspective you know because you'll, you'll get a little lost in it when you're driven like that. And so that's one of the things that I have to work on constantly. And I think, you know, everybody should be aware of is that, Hey, you're going to look back and have your nose down and on the grind and thinking, this is what, you know, this makes you, or this consumes you. And you're going to look back and be like, dang, I missed all the good stuff, you know? And so that's where it, that's, that's to me is don't let it get too big. Look at the other things that, that mean the most. An example of some combining that with what you said earlier about your kids and not having a bad day. I don't know if you yeah. remember. Well, you probably remember. You're a rodeo fan. Luke Branquino on a steer, might have been 10th round steer, didn't get a flag in the bulldog because they said he wasn't touching the steer, made a great run, and they didn't flag it. Cost him the world title. He, he told me this story the next year on my show in Vegas, and he cried when he told me the story. Uh, that he walked out and when he walked out of the arena and went with his family, his kids didn't care because that was just dad. Yeah. And he cried telling this story that that's about not letting it get too big and your family being important. Yeah. Here's big Luke Branquino with tears running down his face. <laughs> but it goes to what you say. You can't have a bad, uh, can't have a bad day when you're around those guys. No. Nah. Nah. No, and it, it, it needs to be like that, whether it be your kids or your friends or whatever. I mean, you need to walk out and know like, look, this is this is the nature of the beast. This is stuff that's going to happen. You know what? Find something that's bigger than it and don't rely on just this or to, to, you know, fulfill you. My girls are 22 and 20 and I have some bad days with them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, 
big picture though. I, Listen, I, all uh, this goes away from like 15 <laughs> to 21. Yeah, that's Ex- stupid. Everything I'm saying. Stupid. Just, yeah. <laughs> Actually, they get to a point now, my girls are at the age, it's hard to have a bad day. Yeah, you know, they yeah. go through that, that phase. Which, you know, I, I was thinking this year, it was so cool. You spent some time at my girl's uh, yeah. place in Bozeman. And, you know, Shelby calls me one day. Hey, I roped last night. Uh, Jackie and I, or this morning, Jackie and I loaded the calves and roped some calves. Hey, yeah, she was really good help. I'm like, no, yeah, excuse me. I said, no shit. Like, <laughs> you know, what's great, Jack, is you are, I, I mean, you're one of the, you're, you're world champion, one of the most well-known ropers in the country. And my college age daughter is just, yeah, Jackie and I rope. She's pretty good help. But that means a lot. I think in this whole, when we talk about the relationships and connections we have, that means a lot to me that you treat my daughters just like they're your equal. And that's kind of the whole rodeo thing to an extent, isn't it? Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, that's even this year. I mean, I'm a horrible person at like keeping in touch with people. Cause mm. I tend to, I got real bad ADD and I just, like I said, I, I have tunnel vision and I'm horrible about keeping in touch with people, but like, you know how there's those people that you'll meet along the way. And it's like, I'm going to be friends with them till the day I die. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I know people I met just this year on the rodeo trail from being out there the first time. And I know I could pick up the phone and call them and visit with them. Like, like I talk to them every day or stop in and see them. And it's just like, man, to me, that's just cool. Like that's fun. It's fun to get to meet people and and hear people's stories. And I don't know. I just think it's neat. Yeah. I, I, the advice I give my kids all the time is, no matter how successful you are, what you do, success in life is built on relationships and connections. You know, yep. oh, that guy got this job because of who he knows. You know, no kidding. Like, yeah. and he knows yeah. him and that he treated works. him well. Yeah, yeah, sorry about reality. Yeah. But yeah, uh, they're college rodeoing right now. What was your college rodeo experience like? You had a, you were a great, you were a college rodeo athlete, right? Were you a yeah. student athlete <laughs> or just an athlete? <laughs> I mean, as I'm older, I wish I would have um, maybe put a little more um, emphasis on the schooling part. You know, now that I look well, back and there's things, I was like, you know, that really could have been interesting if I'd have dove into it a little bit more. Well, but let's at the time, you know. Well, you let's just, say out loud where you went to school. Where'd you go to school? Well, I went to Vernon College first in Vernon, Texas, then Tarleton State University right. in Stephenville. Saying, you know, Rodeo. Cliche, who cliche. is it? Who's calling? Who's calling you? Right well, now? you know what? I put this on um, airplane mode, but apparently it didn't work. Who is Sorry. it? I want to know who's calling you though. It wasn't, it is, if it's um, anybody interesting, it, nobody. It is a, it's a calf roper that I, I hauled four horses back from California. I filled my trailer with horses. Yeah. So everybody's trying to come pick them up. So he's, gotcha. he can wait. It's is fine. it, is it a well-known calf roper? Somebody it's I would Bryson's, know. Seacrest. Oh yeah. I know the name. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Ty Harris has been riding his horse. There so you go. I hauled the horse from California where he was last to here. And I do yeah. know Ty Harris as well. See yeah. relationships yeah. and connections. Jack. All about the relationships. Um, yep. So Tarleton state, isn't that like rodeo university? Like, yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah, Is that Stephenville? Stephenville? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no I know it's, it's so cliche to say you're from Stephenville, but man, it's such a cool town to like, if you want a rodeo, go to Stephenville. Were you, know? you a, were you a college national champ? <laughs> yes. In the breakaway roping. What else? Okay. In college rodeo, did you do every event? I tied goats, which is kind of comical. Whatever. <laughs> not <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I was definitely not into it like your girls. Okay. Uh, well, I'm definitely not a page. I'm the, not a page. I'm the father of the goat NATO. <laughs> I know. I know. I've seen her. I was never as athletic as her and never had the drive to do that. Uh, but no, I, I tied goats and I would place here and there and I team roped a little bit, but that was, that was about it. But yeah, no, actually I went to, you know, it's funny. You said the first year I came to college. So I came from Oklahoma and it was funny because I had, um, I could have gone to close to home for like full rides and stuff, but my whole outlook was like, 
I want to go where the best in the business are. Sure. Well, I'd always heard Texas. Texas is tough. You know, it's the toughest blah, blah, blah. So I went with a friend of mine to look at the college in Vernon, ended up signing right there. And I didn't get a full ride there. And mm. rightfully so, because the first year there, I got, they, oh, I, I don't even know if I made the short run in the breakaway. It was, it was the most embarrassing. I placed in the go time more than I placed in the breakaway, if that tells you anything. <laughs> it was awful. It was embarrassing. I, I literally got my butt kicked every which way you could. I, I was horrible, had so much to learn, but I learned, I came back the next year, adapted, figured some stuff out. And then the next year I won the nation for that, for Vernon. Hmm. So yeah, well, there you go. So it's a learning experience. It well, it all is. You know, uh, yeah. I I love the college rodeo experience. I'll tell you <clears throat> one reason I really like it. You know, you you take you'll learn this someday. You go to high school rodeos and there's eighty two dads standing watching the start at in mm-hmm. the timed events, and you can't <clears throat> you can't even fit. I would just go sit up in the bleachers. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Uh, and as soon as they go to college, parents aren't allowed. Uh, they parents have to be in the bleachers, and that's the greatest thing in the entire world. That parents yeah. just have to shut up and sit down. <laughs> it's definitely different, huh? Yeah, I yeah. I was asked one time. I, I still get asked because some people just think rodeos rodeo. Do you ever clown rodeo high school rodeos? And I always my quick answer is just for orphans. Just those are the only one. I, I'm joking, but. That's the best kind of high school rodeo. No parents. No parents. <laughs> no right. parents. Um, you are, and at one time, our place up in Sh- beautiful Shoto, Montana, you did a clinic. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like, they always say you learn more about something when you teach it. I know like I taught math and I never learned it so well. Coach football, I learned more about football. Does helping other kids make you a better roper? Yes. Well, Here's what I can tell you. It does make me understand it more. So when you do have trouble or you go through a slump or whatever, you've learned to dissect it so much that you, it's a little easier to go back and dissect on yourself. So yes, I do think it helps. Now, sometimes breaking it down so much, like, and just, instead of just roping, you know, it's kind of like, ah, okay, quit thinking about it so much, you know, quit, quit doing all this, but yes, 100% all in all. Yes. I think it does help a lot. What, um, how many, how many would you do? How many clinics a year would you do? Um, I used to do about 10 to 12 clinics a year. Um, it's slowed down drastically now because I did a lot of clinics in the summer because I can do them during the week. Sure. Um, and, you know, and there were more weekends open uh, back, you know, four or five years ago, three, four years ago. But now, gosh, I mean, I did, I did, I did three schools this summer while I was rodeoing. And that was kind of at the first. And then after that, it got to where we were driving and going and doing all this. You just almost don't have time to, to do any during the summer where it was when I did most of mine. I think, I think it's healthy for kids. I know my, my girls have gone, Joe Beaver was a big influence for them. A lot of his clinics, your clinic. I just think, and I think I see it more probably cause it's more common, you know, a parents will buy their kids an expensive barrel racing horse. Well, they make runs for half the summer and then stuff blows up on them and they can't put it back together because the foundation yeah. isn't there to break it down and build, put it back together, you yes. know? Breakaway roping the same way. If they just, you have to, I like when kids take, okay, Jackie Crawford taught me this. Larry D taught me that. And Joe Beaver Uh taught me that. I'm going to take all that and and be my own. But it helps them. Is that a goal in a clinic? Hey, when I send you off to the wolves here, you got to know what to put back together. Yes. That's what I, that's what I tell everybody at the start of the clinics. I'm like, look, I'm not a miracle worker. We got two days. I'm not going to fix your open. This like, I mean, I'm not going to fix it in two days, but my goal is if you leave my clinic with a better understanding of how the rope works, how the run is put together, the things that you need to work on, then I've done my job. Like, I feel like that's my job because from then on, it's up to them if they're going to do it or not, if they're going to apply it, if they're going to do all that. But if I can get them to understand something or uh, X amount of things that's going to help them, then I feel like I did my job. Horsemanship. How important is horsemanship? 
Oh, it, it separates, it separates the good, the, you know, the cream from the, whatever you, what would, would be the, the, not, the cream from the, the not cream, cream rises okay. to That's the top, <laughs> the cream, the cream from the m- milk or milk. something. <laughs> It does because look, there's so many. There, there's got. I mean, look, we have every roping dummy on the planet invented. You know, we've got all the things, all the different ropes. There's a lot of people that can rope. A lot of people. There is not a lot of people that want to put in the hard work and the boringness of working on the horsemanship. You know, that's that's what kids, especially the younger kids. The older, yeah. When I mean, you get a little more, more mature, and you start to, like I said, enjoy that process and enjoy that those pieces of the puzzle and doing that slow stuff that matters it does but the younger kids it's it's so hard to get them to put the time into it and so you'll see every so often you'll you'll have that little freak of nature that enjoys it and they really work on their horsemanship and you'll see them just bam and they might not rope as good as the next person there's there's a lot of girls that out rope me that can use their rope better than me but when you have to combine the two i think that's what that's what excels the girls tremendously. I always, I always, I always joke that I can ride a horse pretty well and I can rope a dummy real well, but I can't, that combination, man, it gets me. Yeah. It gets something me to it, huh? Something to it. Yeah. Uh, when we were talking and for people watching this who maybe, you know, aren't pure rodeo fans as the pro rodeo started having breakaway roping. Why? What, what was the switch that made pro rodeo was there a few that did it and everyone else caught on what's going on that now ladies are getting to rope at pro rodeos the first place i saw it was up in the northwest in the columbia river circuit they mm-hmm. started adding it but what's the big switch what is it you know they did start adding it to some of those rodeos up there and and there's been a few girls jennifer casey did a great job and a few other girls up there did a great job of going to those committees and talking them into it and, and that was amazing for it. Where I saw it like really flip the switch was when the WCRA added it as a pool event. When the WCRA was coming on board and, and getting all this, you know, publicity and things like that and, and, and big money pots and all this stuff going on, they announced they were adding breakaway as a full event. Well, we went and when they did, we were the highest nominating event there was. When, when they announced that we were the highest nominating event there was. So all of a sudden, all these numbers just flood the gates, you know, and they're like, holy smokes. Well, then they crowned, we went to Chicago, which I'm not going to say who the champion was there, but they crowned 50,000. I'm just kidding. It was me. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I was, um, I was hoping so, you'd lead into that. Yeah. <laughs> no. So anyways, it was really cool though, because I was the first girl to ever win. They, they get $50,000 equal money. There was no difference in us and everybody else. And so they gave equal money, 50,000 to women. And it kind of exploded on, on, you know, social media and things. And all these, I think that a lot of other places started putting the numbers together and seeing the numbers. Well, then what followed that was the, so that got a lot of publicity Mm -hmm. and it was televised. Then you have the American jumps on board right after that, a couple months after that, ads breakaway. Well, what do you know? You got freaking almost 500 runs in the breakaway at the American semifinals. We were, we were, I can't remember if we tied the barrel racing or if we were bigger than the barrel racing the first year, but it was very, it was very close. And I mean, just out of the woodworks, like you start saying, Hey, these girls can be on this stage. They came out of everywhere out of retirement out of, I mean, like it was nuts. So, so you got just flooding in here with these breakaway ropers. And so you got the American it was televised. It went over amazing. The crowd went nuts. It, they loved it. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. And so then all of a sudden it was like all this hype. And so then more pro rodeos started adding it and more, you know, committees eyes were open to it, I think. And so it just kind of snowballed from there and just more and more things. Now, I mean, I can't say that I, I'll always give the credit to the W series for adding us as a full equal event. It wasn't like, Hey, we're going to add you and give you X amount of dollars. It was like, Hey, you're an event. Yeah, you're just an event. It was. You're an event, like period. Like so, I'll always give that credit to them, and they were the first ones that crowned a big money breakaway roper, and so 
I think that's that was that was pretty cool. But there's been so many people that have done good with the break, the breakaway as far as like even just the bigger jackpots. It might not have been rodeos, but for years, like people have done yeah. went and got money and had big annual ropes and things like that. So it's been coming. And like I said, it was just that one little like kick to like, hey, get it in well, front of people, get it televised, and bam. Well, then you got what happens is you got the PRCA and PRCA rodeos going. Oh, they, they did it really good. We got to do this if we're going to keep yeah. up with them. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But yeah. if you're going to do it, like you said, the WCRA, they just did it. It's an event. Let's go. If you're going to do it, freaking do it. Um, yeah. My, uh, my daughter Shelby and her mom would enter pro rodeo. Katie in the barrel racing, Shelby in the breakaway roping. There was no guarantee they'd get up on the same day because they couldn't buddy. You can buddy enter with someone. It was that the entries are a different time. Uh, Jimmy Smith, who's an NFR barrel racer, got set up at one rodeo on two different days because she's a breakaway mm-hmm. roper too. If you're going to do it, yeah. what's the... That's the... That is the one thing ab- about it that is uh, like what you got to... S- you can't enter at the same time. And then the, well, it's this, that. No. If you're going to enter an event, am, see, you can sit I there know. and smile. I'll be the it's, one that, so why? No, it is. It is. It is. And trust me, it's one of the hardest things to swallow to like be patient and just be like, <sighs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to understand and, uh, and, and be grateful because I, I am grateful. I am grateful for the opportunities. I am grateful because and I know there's a lot of different moving parts. And, and the more I've dug into it and asked questions, I do, you know, kind of, I, I get the hoops that have to be jumped through. There are, there's, yeah. there's things that have to go on and it, it is hard because it's, you're not just one association, you're two associations, you're the WC the WPRA and you're the PRCA. And we have to mesh this and mingle it together. And it just, there's a lot of hoops now in my, I'm not going to say that I don't get impatient. Yes, I get impatient. And I think some things it's like, come on, let's, let's go. Come on, let's go. But at the same time, I'm also like, okay, you know, we are on, we have momentum. Keep doing what we're doing. It's going to build within the next year or two. And then if it doesn't, then I might lose my ever loving mind <laughs> at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah, hey, you- but I'm being patient and I know that there are people pulling for it and I know there are people that want it and, and are working for it. And so I'm going to have good faith in them and do my part and just bite my tongue and what? wait. Okay. It, to the lay person, we do a lot of things in Western sports that don't help ourselves at all. I always say we can't help ourselves. And one of those things is I don't think people just normal people that want to watch rodeo realize that the men's events and the women's events are under two different management, whatever sanctioning bodies. <laughs> when you go to the NFR, well, it's uh, the barrel racing's WPRA. This is PRC. Nobody gives a crap about all the letters in front of everything. Yeah. I can't go on the pro rodeo.com website and find the barrel racing world standings. Just do them a favor and put it on there. Like, can we all, <laughs> what are we going to fight here? We're, we can't help ourselves, Jack. Like, Hey, hey, funny you mentioned that. Oh. Me and Charlie were talking about it this morning, and I think they put it on there. Really? For the first time in how many years? I swear to goodness. I sw- it's not Logan. updated, but. Logan's looking. Logan's looking right Look, now. Well, I yes, hope so. We were literally talking about that this morning and I was like, well, I want to go over and see who's in, in the team rope. And we were talking about the team rope. We wanted to go see it. So I'm like, well, in the PRCA. And then I got scrolling. I'm like, holy cow, Charlie, the, the barrel racing and the breakaway standings are right here. Well, there you go. Look at that was because of this conversation that we just had. See, (laughs) See, we are moving. We are getting big time. We are moving forward. Oh, look, Logan found it. You know, it it is on there. Both of them. You're welcome. See? There, I went We're on a rant. And Good job. They fixed it. You've probably done this before. That's why they did it. Uh, I have done that before, actually. <laughs> I, yeah, I have. You know, I think it's weird, though, because people don't understand this is. Oh, so here gets into another touchy subject if you want to go into that. But the. So I never understood. 
the WPRA. Okay, so when you go to, there can be a women's associate. The reason it has to be, it's WPRA because men are not allowed to, to run barrel, barrels. barrel race, right. And men are not allowed to breakaway rope. Okay. It's how they're trying. And somehow if it is the PRCA, those can't be. Um, okay. Separated. Yeah, there you go. Uh, in, in Montana, so, in Montana, the Northern Rodeo Association a few years ago had to establish a Northern Women's Rodeo Association so that the barrel right. racing was just women. Right. So that, okay. Exactly. Well, can't you just make a so, rule? <laughs> well, you, you know, I don't know what kind of legal things you would get into in this day and age, but, and, and I, I don't know, like, here's the thing. I can't speak on the barrel side. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know enough about it to, to speak my mind because I don't, I don't the breakaway side. Okay. Look, I am a strong woman, obviously do, you know, whatever. If the, if, if guys were allowed to enter the breakaway, we would get killed. Like they wouldn't even know our name. You let Caleb Driggers or Dustin Egasquiza enter the breakaway roping. Oh, well, it's, cause they're it's, strong. I, yeah. I mean, they are strong. I'm telling you, there's a huge core strength difference and upper body strength difference. And even though it's just breakaway roping, like that is my true opinion. Like it's just, I head steers. I cannot throw my rope as, as, as fast and as far as those guys. And I've tried, you know what I mean? And, and I mean, I feel like I'm a strong girl, you know, and an athletic girl. And it's just, it's just, it's no different than if they said, okay, well, we're just going to have, you know, let's let the best WNBA player play in the NBA. Yeah, she might, she might do, she'll do good, but like. But you're not there just, you're not there just to compete. You're there to win. I think that's right. a, I think that's it's, a hot take on your part. It's, hot, it's take. A hard, hot take it's by a Jackie. It's a touchy subject. It's a touchy subject because everybody's like, oh, women can do that. You know, they can do. It. And look, I, I get it. I mean, like I said, I'm of anybody. I've gone in the team roping. Crap, I entered the team roping. I yeah. made the American top 20 in the team roping. I love it. I just love the sport, men, women, whatever. But I can tell you there, I don't think that men should be able to enter the breakaway roping. Okay. Here it is. Match breakaway roping. Jackie, mm-hmm. Jackie Crawford against Trevor Brazil or tough Cooper. <laughs> what, are the other, what do you think? Let's just do it. And you, Hey, you're a tie down roper too. We won't go there. We won't. <laughs> no, that's old, old washed up. Uh, old washed up dude. Speaking of a different <laughs> level of core strength, I guess the, the burning question I want to know is how pregnant can you be and still be successful <laughs> roping? <laughs> <laughs> what were you apparently about six and a half months is that what you were <laughs> uh vegas last year uh women yeah. you were w- women's breakaway roping world champion you yeah. were you were showing uh, <laughs> slightly slightly i felt sorry for my horse slightly <laughs> like that kind of showing were you conscious of it all the time was it something that you thought of or do you and and, and listen uh you know, my kids, both my kids, their mom, she wrote a long time uh, yeah. while pregnant. They're, you know, I think people underestimate what you guys, how you truly, truly know kind of that point. Yeah. Was it on you your know. mind? Was, you, was it something that um, you thought about much? I did. I thought about it. Like when I got done with the W Series Women's Finals and I had the team rope and alley and stuff, I was like, eh, kind of it kind of getting a little out there you know what I mean but I never thought about it like in the way that I felt like oh I'm gonna hurt I'm gonna hurt my child obviously like it never it never felt like that never never became uncomfortable it's funny I took the only thing that came uncomfortable my jeans were so tight I know I know how you feel I took (laughs) hey I took my rodeo jeans this is cool I took my rodeo jeans to um, a friend of mine that lives right here close to me and I had her cut them and make like the full belly top, like so. It took maternity. my rodeo jeans, yeah. cut them, and made like the full like over the belly maternity pants, and that's what I wore so the whole hot. time. That's it so was hot. amazing. That's so honestly, hot. I wish I could still wear them right now <laughs> because they were so comfortable. You, well, you know you can if you Every want. Day. Just don't I tell mean, anybody. <laughs> it was amazing, but that's what I wore. And so when I decided, like when I decided to go ahead and rope, I just kept telling everyone I was like, the day that I feel uncomfortable or you know, unsafe or even that it crosses my mind of like this, 
I'm, I won't do it like draw out. And so, you know, I took, I, I quit riding everything else. And all I rode was my old horse that I've rode for 11 years now. And he's just like the easiest horse in the world. And I trust him. And it just kind of like have that thing where it's like, he knows, I know, I know mm-hmm. he knows that I know, yeah. you know, like, it's just like, <laughs> we're good. So I cut the horn off my saddle. I, I was actually like, just sitting there thinking during the day. And I was like, I, why do I need a horn? That's the only thing that kind of bothered me. I was like, if something crazy was to happen and say he was a trip stumble, or like, if I really wanted to lean forward, leave in the box, the horn is the only thing that scared me. That's the only thing that could like even do damage, whatever. And so I was like, you know, I really, I don't need a horn. I don't need a horn on my saddle to breakaway rope, you know? And so I was like, Holy cow. I'm going to cut my horn off. So what you, t- you off. tied it to the. Yeah. To like the swells, the swells. Yeah. 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 So I actually, I had an old saddle at Martin and I called him. I was like, Hey, they were just doing some repairs to it. And I said, Hey, um, I know this is going to sound nuts, but he <laughs> cut that horn off. They're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, just saw the horn off straight, like a Bronx saddle and send it back. And so they had it to me in two days and they did it. And I roped out of it. And I'm telling you, it was so comfortable. It was so great. Like I'd never, I felt like I could have stayed roping. It never even. See, yeah. See if that would have been at a, that would have been at a high school rodeo. Some other mom would have come and said, (laughs) she can't, that's an unfair advantage. She can't have the horn off her. You want to know what's funny is I knew as soon as I did that, somebody Somebody. was going to do that. That's sure enough how it works. Some, some, some rule. So when I thought of this, I called the PRCA got a hold of the judges, got it approved through the judges because they couldn't find anything in the rule book that actually stated it had to be tied off to a saddle horn or what a saddle horn technically was. So they said I could have like tied a knob on there or whatever. And that been a saddle horn if somebody wanted to throw a fit about it. And so I got it approved through them. I got it approved through the WPRA. I went through all these hoops because I thought that exact same thing. Because Sure enough, <laughs> as soon as I do something like that, it's going to be like, well, that rope's breaking faster. It's, real, it's breaking faster. No, it's faster. It's, it's no fair. You know, it's no it's fair. It's like, oh my gosh, I knew it was going to happen. So I got it approved. Before. See, I'm way ahead of you there. See, uh-huh, we know, uh-huh. we know in this world, if they can't beat you in the arena, work. they'll, they'll beat you out of the arena. I know um, how these things work. Yeah. Hey, uh, kind of last thing here, because, and I, I like that you talked about that in this process of breakaway roping, becoming a main staple in, in rodeo, the, the fans like it. You're patient about it some of that patience has to carry over to the national finals rodeo. My thought, you know, breakaway roping isn't in, in the actual rodeo performances. I know from being a part of that rodeo, there is a huge process that needs to happen to add an event at Thomas and Mac during the performance. So I think some of the ladies I see aren't being patient. And I think there is some patience needs to happen there. Um, Mm -hmm. And plus, when you guys took off at the beginning of 2021, nobody really gave you an answer. Nobody said, hey, go rope. You're going to rope at Thomas and Macarena. It was never said, was it? So no, it wasn't even, we don't need, it has it not ever been said. It hasn't been said that we would even have a finals. Right. Not even regardless, much less the Thomas and Mac. I mean, I've never heard that we are going to have a finals. We've never been told that until, I guess, last couple of weeks ago. Yeah. But you get to rope in Vegas. It's okay. So the breakaway women's breakaway national finals is at the is at the Orleans Arena, correct? In yep. in uh, in Vegas. Personally, when I saw that, I went. I think that'll be easier to feature it. I think that's a better venue. I think that's a cool arena, and I think it's its standalone event. I'm not sure it's not a better deal right now until someday when it gets into the NFR mind you. Right. I'm not right, saying right, right. stay there and never go to the NFR, but in this moment with no guarantees made to you earlier, I think it's a pretty damn good deal. I, yeah. Uh, but then again, I also don't know what the purse is and what the money looks like. You can tell me that. Well, it, it's going to match. They said that they would at least match last year. They would, they would have a $200,000 purse at least match last year. So, and I think that they're working to maybe get some more added money to that. And so hopefully we can, figure out a way to get some more added money and maybe, you know, try to collect back some of what we spent all summer <laughs> trying to go through these things. But I, I know it's, like I said, it's, it's patience. I I'm with you. I've, I've 
not understood it. I'm coming to a little better understanding of what it takes to have it pressed through there. It's a little different than just pay this and equal money. Well, equal money means we come up with $1.1 million. So I don't know where to pull that out of a hat. And, you know, I, I know that at this point in time, like that there's, that there's people working out. I know they have bigger fish to fry is what I'm saying at this point. Makes and, sense. and kind of, I think they have a lot of stuff going on. And so at some point, hopefully my thing is that I just wish that they would, whether it be the WPRA, the PRCA, Las Vegas events, whoever it is, get together now and come up with a plan for next year so that sure. we have an idea of what the heck we're doing. Because right now we're just, the ones that are out here are the same ones that have been out here. Now there's more girls going this year, but the, there's, a, there's a main group that's been going to every stinking pro rodeo that would put break weight in it for years. I mean, we freaking have sent rigs and chartered planes to go and never and never be able to get our money back. And we've been going forever and I'm still going to go. Because that's what I do, and I want to press it through. But I think at some point it has to stay growing and get bigger and at least give girls, let them know what it's going to be, even if it's going to be nothing. Let them know so they can make that choice right. to go all year or not, you know? So, yeah. I hope um, they do that. And I think they will. Is that your husband, Charlie, clanging gates outside your barn dominium there? You no, know, I thought somebody was fixing to walk in. The door came open, and now they're being really noisy out there. And it, that's okay. I think it's the girls, it's, actually. It's just life. That's just life. It Jack. is. So, I know. It is. Well, I'll tell you, I think being a dad of two passionate breakaway ropers, it's just gotten to be where I really love it. It's a split second event. It's such a, it drives me crazy, but I love it. Um, and I do hope, I, I think with it, it's, uh, you know, breakaway roping horses last so long because it's really not that hard on them. There's no jerking right. there. Uh, Livestock is, it's, it's easier on livestock and keeping calves rolling. I, I have gone through and looked at rodeos like in Montana that didn't have it. And, and I'm pretty critical of production and time frame in a rodeo. I, I don't see a reason to not, honestly. Yeah. I, well, good. Um, so, you know, I think, I think it's going to take, you know, people like you that people are going to listen when you say these things, you know, and I think it's going to take a lot of people falling in love with it and really loving it. And, you know, their kids loving it and, and just watching it at rodeos. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, to me, it's a no brainer. I mean, number one, you're going to bring, when you bring more breakaway ropers, you bring more families. Well, guess whose husband is going to stay buying a PRCA card longer and going to the rodeos longer. Right. Guess whose boyfriend they're going to up and go to the pro rodeos for however long. I mean, the horse market, it's, it's up the value of horses oh tremendously. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, we don't really care how big the calves are or the size of the calves. Stock contractors can make more money on their calves for longer. You know, um, it, there's a lot of different ways that it's going to help, that it'll help, I think, the whole rodeo industry. And I think it's just going to take more and more people falling in love with it, more and more committees you know, wanting it in their rodeo and then turning around and being like, well, why is what we, we gathered X amount of money. Why are we not getting to watch our breakaway ropers at the NFR? You know? Right. So yeah, I think it's just going to take a, a lot of, a lot of, of, of that stuff and, you know, outside pressure yeah. and, and expectations from it, just kind of people expecting it to be in there. So. Yeah. Good points. And by the way, my breakaway <laughs> ropers are not allowed to have boyfriends. So don't bring that up. <laughs> Don't let's just Whatever. cool your I jets saw a boyfriend of the day yeah i know <laughs> shut up uh well listen um I, I appreciate your time i know you've been going hard all summer it was and and with that i just want to say you are i like when you stay around my girls it, it's a good role model because you are you are a wife and a friend and a mom all of that as well as a great roper and that's what i want my girls to see and if I want my two girls to see that, I know there's a lot more out there that are looking at that too. And we talked about relationships, connections. You are a good relationship. And all the late other ladies that stayed at their place too, those are good relationships for, for my kids to have. And I appreciate it. And just uh, not only do I appreciate the time today, I just appreciate you. It's good to see you. You guys are good friends. And, and I appreciate Thanks. that. So, so listen, uh, episode 30. It, it, it one That's of the so best, 30. Jack. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks for <laughs> Thank doing this. Thank you. you. Thanks bet. for having me. You bet. Enjoyed it.